It's Saturday morning. Uh, I know there's a lot of things you could be doing. Sleeping, farmer's markets, brunch, getting drunk, whatever. So I'm super happy that you're here. I do, I do want just to just to understand quickly about the audience before I jump into my spiel. How many people have already started a business? And how many people want to start a business but have not yet started a business? So most people, except for my man in the back, we'll get you there, um, have already started a business. The fun thing about having a group of as intimate as this is that we can really kind of get to some of the heart of some of your exact questions. So I want to take some time at the end, at least, at least half of the time, to answer specific questions that you guys have about your business or about the business that you want to start. So as I'm kind of talking, I encourage you to think about what is your specific question and how can I help you answer it? Um, it's a great ch chance to be kind of selfish and and take the opportunity, the fact that you showed up today, to get some, some advice. And also, what I found is um, most people have the same question as you, and some people are, are too shy to ask. So you're actually helping people out by, by be even being selfish. Um, <clears throat> really quickly, who I am, uh, thank you for the, for the bio. Everything that you heard was completely made up. So I hope that you were impressed. No, I'm just kidding. It was true. Um, I am a CEO of a modern-day marketing company. I uh, have some of my team members here today. Thank you for coming this morning, guys. Um, and, and what we do is we help brands of all sizes think about what is their message and how do you create content around that message to monetize, whether it's selling a product or selling a mindfulness course uh, or selling a sneaker or selling a service. We've worked with Intel. They had a competition called Make It Wearables Challenge where they brought global entrepreneurs from around the world to build something on an Edison chip, which is basically, if you think about what a Fitbit is, uh, you know, it runs on a chip, it records things on a chip. So they, they said, how can we use a chip to build something that will change the world? And they awarded a million dollar prize. And we were in charge of creating all of the content around that week for them, as well as distributing that content. And we've worked with Twitter, we've worked with Credit Karma, Intel, like I said, KPMG, Salesforce.com, big brands that want to revitalize something or introduce something to the market in an exciting way. That's the kind of the first bucket. The second bucket is startups. We help them figure out what is their message. Also, how can you talk about that message? How can you talk about your team in a way that's exciting? Uh, and then everything from inception, from that idea, to the creation of the pitch deck, to actually how you pitch the pitch deck to venture capitalists or potential clients. And over the last five years, we've been able to raise close to $500 million for a venture capital money and helped a lot, you know, 85% of the startups that we've advised are actually still in business in the market today, uh, which if you know anything about startup numbers is like the inverse of actually how it usually works. It's usually nine out of 10 fail. So um, we're really proud of that. And then solo entrepreneurs and small businesses is kind of the third bucket. How many people work in a startup right now? So you guys know, like you guys are like insanely intelligent people and smart people. And then when it comes time sometimes to talk about what you do, you're five minutes into the pitch and people are like, wait, what do you do? So taking that and synthesizing that was really valuable. Um, and then the third thing that I realized was that in order for anything to happen, there has to be a story behind it. I mean, if you think about any of the stuff that we buy, I'm a huge fan of nostalgia. You know, I love, I wear a Mickey Mouse watch you know, because I love what that represents. Um, and I think that, you know, I wear different clothes or I purchase and consume different things because I believe in the story behind these things. And so even today, like I'm here because when we talked, you were so passionate and, you know, I could sense the desire to serve and the whole story behind why you started this. And like, that for me is everything. So I think that we're, we're losing that a little bit in our desire to sell things and our desire to make money because this is an expensive city. And I think that if we can kind of resurrect that idea of the story, that's what I'm very, very passionate about. And I think that telling you, helping you tell stories that sell is exciting for me. So um, I think as you think through storytelling and as you think through the, turning the product into a profit or monetizing your message or whatever else you want to say, I think there are basically three things to think about. Um, number one is 
if you don't really, really, really believe and really, really, really love what you're doing, you basically have no shot. I'm going through my Instagram this morning on the way here and I'm scrolling and what I see is like, there's a swim, girl in a swimming suit and another girl in a swimming suit and another girl in a swimming suit and another girl in a swimming suit. And if you asked me what their names were, I couldn't tell you because for me, they're girls in a swimming suit, right? There was no, there's no store, like if, so the content that you're putting out has to consistently be, oh, that's why. Oh, I get that. Oh, cool. Just do it, Nike. Just do it, Nike. Magic Disney. Magic Disney. Be a kid again, Disney. That kind of seeps into our head and into our mind. And so I think that, that that's the first thing. If your why isn't at the core of all of your messaging and all of your marketing, then I would encourage you all to really take a second look at how you can move that why into the core. So that when I look at a picture, I think, hmm, Interesting, that feels real to me. Like if you look up here, here's my social, I'm everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, podcast, Twitter, LinkedIn, Medium. I was speaking at a conference in Mexico literally two days ago. There were about 3,000 people there and they all, not all of them, but like most of the questions afterwards had, so, had something in common. They said, but Brian, what, won't I overwhelm people if I'm everywhere? And the answer to that question is no, because everyone is consuming content in a different place. So maybe you love to read articles on Medium, but you'll never watch my vlog on YouTube. And maybe you want to just scroll, jam through Instagram Friday night before your party, but you're never going to get on LinkedIn. So the fact is, people are everywhere, and you have to understand that every single platform is different, and people are coming into these platforms differently. As I'm looking through swimming suit pictures this morning, I'm actually not thinking about, well, I am thinking about business development because we do a lot of like influencer video campaigns, so like that's why I have swimming suit. Like, for all those of you that are wondering, like, well, why do you have so many people in swimming suits on your Instagram page? You know, That's why, because we do a lot of influencer stuff, but for most of us that are in uh, Instagram, we're not thinking about business development. But when we're in LinkedIn, we're not thinking about what the executive did on Friday night. And you have to understand that your content has to be consistent with those platforms, but most importantly, your content has to be on those platforms because everybody is di in different places. So that's number two. And number three, what we have to realize is that the gatekeepers are completely gone. Because the internet has equalized the playing field completely, we are 100 and 50% in control of our own stuff. And there is no longer the desire or the need to have to pray, hope that someone accepts you and your idea. You can start like 10 seconds from now. And so for me, that's really, really excited. Where in the past, all the, and still to an extent today, all the media companies are run by really rich white guys who you know, are basically running all of you know, we're running Madison Avenue, it's just not the case anymore. You, for the first time, don't have to depend on anyone else to start things. And then the last sort of pillar is the engagement with your community. It shocks me how many people are obsessed, and I mean obsessed, obsessed. And the more I speak around the world, the more I am reaffirmed of this belief with the number of followers that you have. Like that dictates the business. What really dictates the business is how much money do you make? Like, I don't care if I have four, I would rather have four followers and make $100,000 a year than have 100,000 followers that I bought, which is happening all the time, and make 12 cents a minute, 12 cents a, a month. 12 cents a minute would be what, Santa? Santa! <laughs> um, so if you are worried, if you're in that, if, if, if you're in that world where like the followers are so important to you, I'm really, really encouraging you with 100 followers I can do real damage because I can go so deep with those 100 followers and I can actually care about them as human beings. That's why when we were talking today and you were saying, I don't know how many people are gonna show up, my answer was easy. I don't care how many people show up, the right people will show up and I will give everything I have to the right people that have shown up because that's where my mind's at. I don't care if there's 5,000, like there were 3,000 people at the conference on Wednesday and I'm just as excited about today with 50 people. So if you look at your audience like that, you'll win. Because if you can't engage when you have 50 followers, you'll never engage when you have 5,000. And you'll never engage when you have 50,000, and you'll never engage when you have 5 million. So this idea of waiting until I hit a certain point to become really invested in my community is ludicrous. So that's kind of how I think about business right now, about storytelling, about product, about branding. Um,
And I'd love to take this chance for the last 10 minutes to take your individual questions about what's going on in your business and uh, how I can help. How do you do all these things? There's actually a pretty, so I've basically figured out how to hack content, right? So this speech, for example, let me just give you a very practical example of how this looks and how you could do this actually within this. This speech will now be a YouTube video, okay? And then what we'll do is, Thomas, where are you? Thomas is in the back. Thomas is one of our writers, or copywriters, in our agency. Thomas will turn this speech into a Medium and a LinkedIn article, okay? Santa, right here, a right-hand woman, will turn this 30-minute talk into 15 different 30-second clips that we'll put on Instagram, right? And then we'll, we'll upload the whole talk to Facebook and we'll rip the audio from the video and put it on a podcast. I am doing nothing different with my life. I'm sitting here giving you a 30 minute talk. That is now gonna be distributed across seven different platforms. Now, your next question might be, but Brian, what if I don't have a, what if my handsome Netherlands husband doesn't wanna record me? Yeah. <laughs> You should leave him. <laughs> you should divorce him tomorrow. No, kidding. <laughs> what you should do next is this. You figure out the medium that you like the most. So throughout all of time, there's been video, not all of time, but there's, there are basically three ways of communicating. Video, audio, written. What do you prefer? What is your favorite thing? Because here's what I can guarantee you. If you don't, just like if you don't love your product and don't really believe in your product, you'll never win. If you don't love the medium that you're choosing, to distribute content, you'll never create it. If I had to edit my own videos and shoot my own videos, I'd never, ever, ever do a video. So you have to think about what is your content, what is your method, but I will say this, all, like what is your business? Let's just jump into it. Well, I'm not, I'm not at a startup, I'm actually in a law firm, but I just asked. In a law firm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, are you thinking about this for the law firm or are you just in general? The other thing is, if you're working in a law firm and if you have a couple, just even if you just have a thousand dollars a month that you can spend, yeah. there are plenty of places that can help you with this. You know, like there are plenty of places that can help you get your content up. You just set up a Google Doc or an, you know an editorial calendar where you put in some content and some pictures, and they'll put it up for you. But really, it's it's about hacking things, guys. If and and also think about this. You know, my father started a business 35 years ago and the way that he got clients was he had to cold call in the, using the phone book. Like we, I don't even, like some of, some of you probably remember, I don't even remember what a phone book looks like. But he would spend 15, 20, you know, 50, he would spend 15 hours a day cold calling people. For those of you that are like, oh my God, it's so much work. It's like, yeah, but it's your advertising. It's like your entire advertising section of your company. And there are people that dedicate eight to 10 to 12 hours a day on advertising, and you have to too, because otherwise you just got no prayer. Well, I, I have started a business, and I'll admit I've actually done the, the cold calling thing. Yep. And you know, when, when you're talking to other, say, business people, specifically architecture, and you're trying to sell them a service of like training, and I'll say, my business counselor said, people buy benefits, but I guess, a couple things. What do you think is the best way to market? Because I guarantee the people who see me on like Facebook are probably the people that are sitting there running CAD, and they're the people who are like, I don't want to run CAD anymore. I want to be, you know, trained in what I would be training them on. I guess so. How do you think a story like that would be cracked? Yeah. My first question is, do you have a professional Facebook page? Because just so you know, like personal for everybody else, personal pages you can't run ads against. So you have to have a professional page to run advertising. So that was why I asked that question. So with, with in your case, I would literally say my first, two, my first two lines of the video that I would make, and by the way, these videos don't have to be fancy. It can be you in a nice suit with your phone right to your face saying, hey, CAD software users, are you sick of it? Are you looking for a new way? Well, let me talk to you for a minute. That's the first ten, five seconds and you advertise it to, and you can get this specific on Facebook advertising, you can advertise that to people that use CAD that live within a five mile radius of this office that make more than $75,000 a year that are following people like you 
that are all like your comp your competitors. It's really crazy, guys, the capabilities that Facebook has. So I would start, I would run an ad like that because you can cold call all you want, right? And I, I, by the way, I admire the fact that you're cold calling. That already tells me a lot about you as an entrepreneur, that you're willing to like get your hands dirty and like go for it. But there, are, I also would encourage you to work smart, which is you can cold call right to the phone without having to cold call by running a Facebook ad that's very targeted to the exact people that you want to reach. And then you just put a little uh, call to action button, which is learn more, which takes them to a page where they can schedule a phone call with you, right? Social media is just a gateway to get in front of somebody. Like if you, like so people are misunderstanding social media. Oh, they're taking all the human connection out of it. I'm like, no, it's just the same thing as the cold call. It's just the knock on the door. And then once you answer the door, we got to talk. But you use social to get them into the door. So use, the, I, would, I would start with that. I would run a Facebook ad to those people. The call to action is learn more, which is set up a 15 minute call with you, which leads to a one hour dinner, which leads to a three hour meeting, which leads to a new client. Cool? Question. I see the true potential of social media when you're a B2C company, but if you are a B2B company, how do you approach like, let's, there, there's loads of opportunities. So let me talk, let's talk about your specific company. Because I want to give you guys like specific value. I'm into multiple different things. But Which, just pick one you really want to talk about. B2B that you're interested in like expanding. Okay, but in but educational institutions? And the institutions would be our clients. How would you approach them through social media? Well, LinkedIn would be my, my definite starting place. Because in LinkedIn you can target, you know, it's is it, you know, you first of all you have to think about, and anytime you're targeting LinkedIn, think about a title, right? Like, you, so you say our clients would be institutions. That that if you look, if you type in institutions in LinkedIn, you're not going to get any search queries. So you want to think about a title. So the title of the person would be what? Director of Career Services, Director of Professional Development, or I don't know, like whatever the title would be inside of that university, you can get that information very quickly from LinkedIn. I would do a couple different things. No, I mean, that would be, so you, there's a couple different things you have to do, right, you have to think about. The first thing is, you have to re recognize that everybody wants to do this. Like, it, university systems right now are under attack in a lot of ways, because the brand of the university system in America is going to slowly deteriorate because they're going to realize that most of the stuff that we can learn, we can actually learn outside of college. So, you, what you're going to, so you, your, your, ad, your value add has to be something like that. Like, yo, you're losing students or whatever. Here's what we can do for you. There's a couple different things you can do. The first thing you can do is you can cold call on LinkedIn. And, and there's still nothing wrong with cold calling. LinkedIn is actually a great platform. We sent out a thousand messages last week on LinkedIn. Second thing is this. I actually use LinkedIn to get the titles and the information of people, and then I stalk them on the other social networks. So what you should do is if you want to get in, into the, you know, talk to NYU, you should find the person in LinkedIn that would be responsible for hiring you, send him or her a message about a 15 minute phone call. They probably won't respond, but what you do then is you go into LinkedIn, you go into Twitter, and you go into Instagram, and you go into Facebook, and, you, and they'll be there because they're people, and you find out what they care about, and you start to engage them in conversations around what they care about. So many ways to get to people in a creative way that's aligned, that's not spammy like a cold call. That's what I would do. I would stalk the people that you want to talk to. <laughs> I'd find ways to add value to them, and to make, them, to make yourself seem credible, or to be credible in their eyes, and then I'd set up a coffee after three or four of those. How do you think of managed quality? Because we seem to get stuck in the re-edit mode more often than not. That's a great, it's a great question. What are you selling? We are selling online subscriptions to databases, to university professors, and libraries actually. What does the database have the database in it? The database has children's literature database basically. So it's about professors and what they're teaching in their classes, as well as what librarians are doing with their curriculums and uh, collections. And the idea is if I have access to this information, I can better equip the curriculum yes. to be relevant. Yeah, collections for patrons and children coming in. Okay. What's the second one? Second one is actually using the same content to direct at parents themselves to help their children. That to me seems more interesting, just because, again, institutions are getting squeezed from every single angle right now. 
and the only like you know they're raising tuition so they can pay for services like this and that's going to make people not want to go and that, so it's tri the college system is tricky the parents are way more interesting to me but what is the added value for the parents if they have I access to this in a, unable to find out the right kind of things that can help their children improve their reading skill. So we fit that tool in there. So to I would do a podcast and a YouTube show and a Facebook show all about these tools. And I would, I think that the, since it's an educational program, and if any of you have educational things, like if, you're, if your goal is to educate, people don't care about the quality of the video. They care more about the, if it's an entertainment thing, if like you, you guys know who Casey Neinstead is, he's like a vlogger. He's like a, one of the fam most famous vloggers in the in the world. His videos, he thinks about every second of his video. Literally, he he thinks about every single second because every no one's watching for educational purposes. They're watching because it's like a little movie every day. But if you're educating parents then I would actually say that the faster you can put out more and more and more content, the better, because they're not gonna care so much about the quality of the video, right? Yeah. They're gonna care more about the information. So I would think about how can you do a podcast and a video around, maybe it's a weekly thing, around the best resources for parents, for the reading of their children or whatever, and then I would actually also get parents onto my show. And then, I, and where do you live? Uh, in near Atlantic City, South Jersey. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. So you can you can find you know there there are, there are ways to target people in a way that makes sense. So for you, I would say like go onto Instagram. Here's what I would do. I would go onto Instagram. I would type in hashtag parent, hashtag reading, hashtag parents who read, hashtag like I would play around. You're gonna get a, a result. So if I did hashtag parents Atlantic City, I'm making it up, but let's just say. You're gonna get a result. It's gonna be divided into two different sections. The first is gonna be the most like like top posts, which are the most engaged posts. The second one is gonna be mo most recent. Might be flipped, but you get the point. So this gentleman, let's say he has two children, and let's say he's got a picture with them reading a book. Right? This would be an ideal situation, but you can be creative about how, if it doesn't look this ideal, how you can play with it. He has fifty thousand followers on Instagram. Okay. He lives in Jersey, or he lives in Atlantic City. I would hit him up. I would say, I want to give you this database for free. I love it that you love reading. If you like it, the only thing that I would ask is the next time you post a picture with your two girls, you would mention the fact that you found the book from my database. Now, everyone that's engaging in parents that read this man's Instagram, now all of a sudden say, well, what is that database? Boom, directs it to your page. That's called Instagram Influencers. It doesn't have to be girls in swimming suits, right? It's like micro-influence in your field for people that are highly engaged in what you're talking about. Same is true of the accounting, right? Like there's, I love it when you, this example is so niche, his example is so niche, I love that because there are so many people. You get five of the, of the stay-at-home moms in Jersey City or Atlantic City who have influence in their little communities to talk about your database and that, in and of itself, completely changes your entire business. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have time? I think we're out of time. Guys, hit me up on the social world. If you want to email me, my email is connect at brianrashid.com. If we can be of help to your startup or your company or taking you to the next level or thinking through content strategy, please email me. I'd love to talk more about how we can help you. Um, and, and most of all, I just want to thank you for your time and attention. You guys have been great. So thanks a lot.